This is a 3D printed miniature storage solution. I made this for one of my favorite board games, War of the Ring. I'll show you how I did this, and I'll show you some of the mistakes I made along the way. I made a lot of mistakes along the way. So I also figured out how to do this two color inlay that you can see right here. Uh, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So in my last video, I speed painted 272 miniatures from this awesome game, War of the Ring. Uh, but I couldn't just throw all those miniatures into one big bag or box and then um, have them all get messed up. So I decided to customize and create a storage solution that held them securely in place. The way I look at it, creating these custom boxes protects the miniatures, but also helps set up and makes the ease of gameplay that much better. To do this, I use my brand new 3D printer, the A1 from Bamboo Lab that you can see right here. So to do this design, I use the free 3D modeling software, Fusion 360. Now I know 3D modeling can be intimidating, especially for a beginner, but I'm gonna to try to show you in this video that 3D modeling can be pretty simple as long as you follow these two basic steps. Now these two simple steps that can help you master 3D modeling is sketch and extrude. Sketching isn't complicated and not like sketching on a paper. Fusion 360 runs off of basic math, and so you just need to give dimensions or give a distance. Once you have a basic sketch completed, then just push this little extrude button here to turn it into a 3D model by adding thickness to the part. Following this method, I designed this little hook fit or channel for the bases of the miniatures. Now here's the first of many of my mistakes. It took me several times to measure and get the right length, width, and height for this channel to make sure that it fit just right. What worked for me for this was using calipers, but then adding a couple of hundredths to this me measurement to give it some wiggle room. Too close and it doesn't fit, too wide and it's too loose. Now that I have my basic box designed, I wanted to design a lid that could fit on here and secure this in place. Unfortunately, this is where a lot of my mistakes came in. I kept struggling getting the exact measurement. It was always too tight or too loose. I finally figured out that if you took calipers and measured the box and then added two hundredths to each side, that was the perfect amount to make your lid snugly fit onto the box. Now the last step is to make this wording and this symbol into your 3D print. This just really makes these boxes stand out. So putting wording on your box is actually pretty easy as you can just create a sketch and then create a text box on whatever surface you would like. When you do this, you can just negatively extrude that text a very small amount to create a selectable surface for your multicolor 3D printer, like my A1, and assign the letters a new color in the slicer program. These symbols or photos are more complex, and what you need is a vector image or an SVG file. I'll put a link in the description below for a more detailed explanation on how this actually works. One I use to create these particular images. To summarize that, um, you basically turn a JPEG into an SVG file, you take a normal photo, turn it into a black and white photo, then you turn it into a vector image, and then you can put it into your software and get this symbol to come out. Now this part gets me to the last mistake that I made, which you can kind of see right here. What I was doing is I was extruding the image slightly a small amount and so what the printer tried to do is it tried to bridge across that to create this. What I ended up figuring out is that instead of extruding the entire image slightly, you go in and you make a small border of your image and you extrude that instead, and the results are much better. Um, you don't, you're not forcing your, your printer to try to bridge this entire gap here. And as good as my A1 is, it's just not gonna be able to bridge that far. Here's what the final product looks like. If you happen to like War of the Ring and would like to print these same boxes for your game, please see the link in the description below for the location of where you can download these files for free to print these boxes yourself. If you 
enjoyed this video or got anything out of it, please feel free to subscribe and like. If you did not like this video, that's okay. I wanna hear about it. Comment in the section below. What can I do to improve? What, what didn't you like about it? Let me know. I'd be very interested in hearing your opinion. If you missed the last video where I speed painted all 272 miniatures for this game, that link is right here.